from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Mikey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Mikey Show. This is where America gets together and talks about the issues you really care about. It's every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I'm looking at a letter here. This is to a an advice column called Dear Amy. Dear Amy. And, um, no, just read it to you. (laughs) Dear Amy, my wife has a digestive disorder. (laughs) That's, That's reason enough to leave, by the way. She knows what she can eat, but she often wants me to choose a restaurant. Recently, I asked her to suggest a restaurant. Instead, I got a laundry list of main courses that she'd like to see on a menu. Here's a lady who bemoans that we should try different eateries. The editor changes to eateries. Nobody uses that word. Nobody. Yet she won't help with suggestions, and she doesn't like mine. When I told her how I felt, she called me a smartass. How do I steer out of this tailspin? Oh, meow. Let me just say this. Amy can be a fine individual, but we don't need Amy's response here. This is one of the things that drives me the craziest about relationships. Whether you're dating somebody or married to them or whatever. You know, you may find it hard to believe hearing your cynical host every day saying cynical, nasty things to people. But I am one of the most, yeah, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, I am one of the most positive, upbeat people you'll ever meet. Of course, you haven't met me, so all you get is the cynical, sarcastic, nasty side. But if you ever met me, uh, when I am at home, I am one of the most j- j- just positive people in the world. Why? Because my life is so freaking good. I'm never bored. You know, there's nothing that bothers me more than people who say, I'm bored. I'm bored. I don't know what I'm going to do today because I'm bored. It's like, Have you looked around you? (laughs) Have you seen what's out there? Are you kidding me? I don't care if it's movies or books or music or travel. I don't care if it's hiking. I don't care if it's what I like to do is uh, go up to my other house, just look at sunset. Have you watched the sunset lately? Yeah, I know you think I'm Pollyanna, but the reality is there's a lot of stuff going on. Throw some logs in the fireplace. Light up the fireplace. Come on, step it up. Drink a good bottle of wine. Let's go. Life is good. And these people who can't decide where to eat, that that's that these are members of the I'm bored club. I never go out anywhere. You never take me to eat. I never we never go out and try different eateries. It's it's the I'm bored club. By the way, women who say I'm bored never, ever could be in my life as relationships, ever. 
if you ever use that phrase, uh, I tell you what, not, not that I'm looking for a permanent relationship, but here's the thing. If you are ever in my presence and you say the phrase, I'm bored, you're gone. That's it. I am not your entertainment. And the I'm bored, well, the I'm bored club, they've got a lot of characteristics. You know what I'm saying? The I'm bored people, I used to have a relationship with an I'm bored person. Had they have the TV on from the time they wake up in the morning until the time they go to bed. The TV is the soundtrack of their day. The TV is on all goddamn day. These are the people who are not watching the TV. They just have to have it on. These are also the people who talk on the telephone while the TV is on. These are people who have the TV playing in another room in case they go from one room to the other. Which they generally don't. But you never know, you might go to the other room, you might not want to miss a second of the action. These are the people who constantly are telling you, you're in a relationship and they're saying, we never see anybody, we never do anything, we never go anywhere, we never... And you are supposed to be, like the calendar section of the L.A. Times, you are supposed to be ready with, hey, I heard about a new restaurant. Hey, did you hear who's playing at the House of Blues? Hey, there's a movie coming out this weekend. Yeah, I mean, have you ever been with a woman like that? These women who need your constant... I, I, I had one of these. She had to have a dog. She had to have stuff going on. The house had to be like a pinball machine. Things are going all the time. There's noise. There's dogs yapping. There's the doorbell ringing constantly. The phone is ringing constantly. Whoa, 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 whoa. And even through it all, I'm bored. We never do anything. We never go anywhere. We do Drives me insane. Women who think that we are their entertainment. Have you ever been with a broad like that? And the restaurant thing is all part of that. Come on. When's the last time you took me to a restaurant? Okay, what would you like to eat? I don't know. What do you want to eat? I'm thinking to myself, if I wanted to go out to a restaurant, I would have made a reservation and said, Come on, we're going to a restaurant tonight. Clearly, I haven't done that. So when you tell me, you never take me anywhere, we never go to a restaurant. When I ask you what you want to eat, I expect you to know. I expect you to give me the name of a place or a kind of food. But no, you get into that conversation. You never take me out. When are we going to go to a restaurant? Okay, where do you want to go? I don't know where you want to go. Then, ever answer, I, I don't know where you want to go, you give an answer. Um, me, I, I have the list. You know, I have the list of places, like it, when women complain about this, I've got the list of places where if we're going to go out to eat, I'm comfortable. So I'll say, how about Genghis Cohen? Oh, Chinese? Yeah, yeah, that was not what I had in mind. What did you have in mind? I don't know, what do you want? Okay, let's go to Mastro's in Beverly Hills and have a steak. A steakhouse? Oh, God, you know, they always have those big portions of everything. And, you know, you get a big crowd. It's very loud in there. All right, where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? Let's go to Angelique Cafe over on Melrose. Nice little Italian restaurant that I really enjoy right over there on Melrose. There's nothing happening there. It's kind of quiet in there. There's no, there's no crowd. There's no people in there. You know, just kind of like, you know, you sit down, you eat, you leave. Have you have you been with this person I'm describing to you? That's the person we're hearing about in this letter to Dear Amy. Come on. You never take me anywhere. And by the way, it isn't just restaurants. It's movie. You know, it's Friday night. You know, we should have, like, date night. We never go to a movie or anything. What would we like to see? I don't know what movie you like to see. You know, and then you start naming movies. Yeah, it's kind of an action flick. 
Well, what do you want to, I don't know. What do you want to see? Come on. You, it's like a date. You're supposed to like figure out. Oh, my God. Kill me. Why do I live alone? That's why. The I'm Bored Club. The chick who like, by the way, it's not just chicks. One time, a bunch of us got together for my birthday, which was arranged by the charter member of the I'm Bored Club. She set it up that 15, 15 friends of mine would all come to uh, the Napa Valley. We'd spend my birthday in one of my favorite places to hang out. So we all go. Now you got 15 people. And so it's like uh, we're, we're, we're in a van and we're going to go to wineries. It's getting to be around lunchtime. It's going to be, you know, it's like 11, 11.30 in the morning. Like, okay, so who wants lunch? I'm not hungry right now. I'm starving. I don't know. What do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want to eat? you got 15 members of the I'm Board Club all say, I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. I don't want to eat now. Well, I'm starving. Well, how about we just stop and we eat, and those who want to eat, eat, and maybe some people will be, and they would debate and discuss and compare and contrast where to eat, when to eat, what kind of food to eat. Should it be now? Should it be in a half hour from now? Should it be an hour from now? Should we wait till dinner? This stuff drives me insane. It just drives me insane. And Gary and Dean saw me going insane and literally, we were at a restaurant. We were at, I'll tell you where we were. We were at the Rutherford Grill on Highway 29 in Rutherford, California, right across from Nibam Coppola, which is now called uh, uh, Rubicon Estates Winery, owned by Francis Ford Coppola. That's where we were, Rutherford Grill. And I swear I was in the middle of a conversation about whether people wanted to sit at a table in the sun or in the shade. This is after we discuss whether we want to eat at 11 or 11.15 or 11.30 or 11.40 or 11.42. Now we were discussing where people want to sit. Some people want to sit in the sun. On the other hand, some in the shade. Some were not hungry. They didn't feel comfortable sitting at a table if they weren't going to eat anything. Now you can imagine this big conversation that ensued. And I literally, I collected Gary and Dean and I, I told them quietly, I said, come on, we're leaving this. And we got in the van when nobody was looking while they continued their debate. And I took them to two of the most kick-ass wineries in the Napa Valley while everyone decided where they were going to eat. By the way, this was my goddamn birthday. Okay? <laughs> when I got back, two members of the crowd were like, yeah, hey, we want to go shopping. You know, we don't go, we're going to wineries. Who cares about that? Oh, my God. It was like 15 members of the I'm Board Club all getting together in a van. Oh, God damn. You've got to be kidding me. You know what? It's just guys, a couple of guys. You know, if I'm standing there with a couple of friends, I'm talking to these guys. You know, I'll be like, hey, let's go have a pastrami sandwich. Okay, and they're in. You don't sit there and go, I don't know. Do you want to have Greek food? Do you want to have Indian food? Maybe we have a falafel. I don't know. What do you want to have? Oh. You know, one person makes a suggestion, everybody else either signs off on it or makes one other suggestion, and you're done. But the I'm Board Club is so bored that they, they like just the whole give and take of it, the drama of sitting there and debating and discussing and deciding. They like debating whether they want to drive north or south or east or west. They like debating whether we're going to come back to the hotel at 5 or 5.30 or 6, whether we're going to go uh, up to uh, up a mountain or down a hill. Uh, uh, the, the constant discussion of every little thing. Sometimes you get that feeling when you go home to your own family, don't you? And nobody can agree on anything. Are we going to... By the way, my family... My family was always like debates about which fast food we were going to eat. Were we going to have Kentucky Fried Chicken? Are we going for Jack in the Box? Are we going to order a couple of pizzas? What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Oh, I'm checking out. I'll eat whatever everybody else decides because I don't like food enough, and I certainly don't like drama enough to stand here and engage in conversation. 
So anything short of horse meat, and I'm in. Seriously. You got to be kidding me. So this guy writing into Dear Amy, there he is saying, oh, you know, she's a, he's got bigger problems. This letter, it, he, he doesn't understand. This is the tip of the iceberg. Wait till they get to discussing, like, baby names or what color furniture they want to put in the kids' room or <laughs> life is going to be this constant debating, discussing, getting input from all sides, being indecisive about what to do, saying, come on, honey, what do you think? And then you say what you think, and she says, well, that's terrible. You've got terrible taste. I don't understand why you would say, why would you want blue? It's clearly green. I don't know. I have no patience for this stuff. Are you with somebody like this? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred top. That's our telephone number. Oh, these chicks are just. By the way, there are guys like this too. I just don't date guys, so I don't know what that's like. What uh, you know what? If you can't decide on the simplest little things, like whether you want a strami sandwich or a corned beef sandwich, get away from me. Just get away from me. <laughs> Oh, my God. Ever been with a woman? You go into... Here, I'll give you a perfect... Here's an L.A. example. If you live in L.A., you know Jerry's Famous Deli. There's like three of them that I know of. There's one over there in the marina. There's one in Studio City. And there's one across from the Beverly Center. And uh, Jerry's Famous Deli. It's been around a long time. Um, It's good. And, and uh, they're just better delis in town, in my opinion. Greenblatt's. Nate Nell's. Arts, Candlers. Other than that, it's pretty good. It's definitely one of the top five delis. Maybe one of the top six or seven. It's, it's up there. You know Arts Deli, don't you, Art? Yes. So you know what the awning says there. Arts Deli is where every sandwich is a work of art. And wit like that, you don't get often. <laughs> Tell you what. But anyway, uh, yes, you take a chick to like Jerry's Famous Deli. And here's one thing about Jerry's, which may be why I don't put it in my top five delis in town. Okay. Because the, the, my favorite delis specialize in, it isn't exactly kosher. There's no kosher delis of note in Los Angeles that I can name. But kosher style, you know what I'm saying? Pastrami and corned beef and brisket and, uh, you know, the knishes and you know, what you would find at a Jewish deli. Jerry's Famous Deli has a menu that is so large. Have you ever been in a restaurant where the menu is physically so long that it flops over? Like, it's more than 14 inches. It's it's deeper than, like, a tabloid newspaper. And so when you attempt to open it, it flops over. The top folds over, and you have to, like, straighten it out. Jerry's Deli specializes in, well, everything. They've got Chinese egg rolls. They've got cheesecake. They've got uh, a you name it. They've got anything with bacon on it. Like those kosher delis that serve bacon, I'll tell you what. But bacon... I mean, you name it, they, they, they probably got sushi. I mean, it's one of these places you go in. What do you want? They've got it. And I will never take a woman there. Never. Because you will literally be there all night. You will literally be, I have, I have, I've made this mistake and I will never make it again. You go into a place with that many choices. Here's what you do. Tell her dinner is at seven and get there at eight. And she'll still be looking at the menu. Figured I'd wait till you got here. Yeah. Are you with a chick like this? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Marco on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, sir? I'm okay. 
Yeah, I had a chick like that that I was going out with, and uh, yeah, I know what you mean. If like uh, want to go out and uh, so I say, all right, what do you feel like? And then it's like, oh, I don't know. And the same thing what you're talking about, movies or the dinner. So now I like before I got hip to you, I was like, uh, you know, cater to them. But now when I got hip to you, I was like, you know, I'll take you to a famous restaurant that everybody knows. So they're they're all happy and you know, trying to wonder what restaurant I'm gonna take them to. I pull up to the McDonald's drive-through, you know, save a couple bucks and just uh, get into that. No, I, I I'm a step ahead. I just say I tell you what, whatever, what time you have a dinner tonight? I'll meet you later. Uh, what time you you gonna have dinner about seven thirty? Good. So you'll be done about nine. All right. Why don't we hook up after that? Exactly, and it was the same thing with the movies, you know, like, uh, if I like going to a movie, then I'm like an idiot going to a movie, then, all right, we pull up there, and then, like, they're like, okay, whatever you want to watch, and then I pick a movie, and nah, I don't feel like watching that, and it's like, you know what, my daughter, you know, I pick whatever movie, and uh, then one day, like, she just, uh, we bought the tickets, went in there, and she liked the movie, she took off, you know, I really care, so I just stood there watch the movie, and better for me, you know, instead of dealing with that, you know. But oh, yeah. uh, thanks to you, you know, I, I know what's up now, and now I don't have to deal with that um, dumb stuff. I am looking, by the way, at the uh, the menu for Jerry's Famous Deli. It's online. You can see it. If you go to jerryfamousdeli.com, I mean, <laughs> this is supposed to be like a Jewish-style deli. They've got their signature drinks. This is before you even get to the food. Cosmos, Lemon Drops. Ten Cane, Ultra Premium Mojito. <laughs> They've got all these different cocktails listed. They've got uh, what looks like about 15 different kinds of beer, beverages, coffee, vanilla coffee, chocolate mocha coffee, tea, herb tea, milk or non-fat milk, hot chocolate, chocolate milk, ice mocha, iced tea, iced coffee, raspberry iced tea, soft drink. Soft drink? Are these all soft drinks? Lemonade, cherry lemonade. I don't know if I want lemonade or cherry lemonade. Fruit punch, Dr. Brown, spring water, mineral water. Then they've got juices. They've got champagne, for God's sake. Oh, yes. And look at all the different kinds of coffee. they got the espresso bar, espresso, coffee Americano, red eye, black eyes, cafe au lait, iced chocolate mocha, cappuccino, ice, appetizers, potato pancakes, potato knish, crepe lock. Chopped chicken liver, stuffed cabbage, hummus, herring, chicken tenders. What kosher deli would be complete without chicken tenders? Or mozzarella sticks? Or buffalo shrimp? Shrimp are not even kosher. Come on. You're kidding me, right? How, name another Jewish deli that sells, sells New England clam chowder. Seriously. And you go through here, and there's uh, just the, the, by the way, the menu is 10 pages. I'm not kidding. I'm looking at it right now. Like any good Jewish deli, they've got meatball sandwiches, buffalo chicken sandwiches, Philadelphia cheesesteak, a gyro. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a deli with a gyro. For God's, I I, I knew I wasn't making this up. I and it's always like two in the morning. I've got some broad like who's like, "Come on, I'm starving," and you stop it. And I I don't do it anymore. But this is insanity. Chicken breast schnitzel. There's hundreds and hundreds of items on this. May how can you make all of them well? Just my opinion. Look, it's, oh, and, and by the way, more, more kosher deli items, quesadillas, chicken quesadillas, nachos. Are chicken quesadillas kosher? I don't think so. Tacos al carbone, soft fish tacos, soft taco plates, burritos, fajitas, beef stroganoff, macaroni and cheese. And, and by the way, well, more uh, kosher deli items, uh, uh, potato skins with bacon bits and sour cream. <laughs> New York-style pizza. Meatball, ham, pastrami, Canadian bacon, anchovies, Greek olives, black olives, pepperoni, sausage. You can put. You can get a Euro pizza at Jerry's Famous Deli. That's right. I'm not kidding. Don't ever bring a chicken to this place, ever. 
ever. You will never order. You will be there all goddamn night. I'm not. I don't know if I want the egg cream or the smoothie. I don't know if I want the chocolate fudge cake or the seven layer cake or the Snickers cake. I don't know if I want the Mediterranean sandwich or the vegetarian sandwich or the egg sandwich. I don't know if I want the Belgian waffle or the Belgian waffle sundae or the brownie sundae or the banana. Are you gonna split this with me? Oh, I don't know if I want the ice cream or the black and white shake. I don't know if I want the Jello or the rice pudding. I don't know if I. <laughs> Oh, my. When I go to a Jewish deli, that's what I want, chorizo and eggs. <laughs> that is so not kosher from so many different angles. Jerry has no problem with it. It's a good thing Jews don't believe in hell. Because you'd be going if you were having a deli that was serving all this stuff. I'll tell you right now. Anyway, yes, Jerry's Famous Deli. There it is. Oh, and they, uh, they also own one in Miami, by the way. North Miami Beach. Oh, save me. Anyway. What's your topic tonight? Oh, anyway? yes, yes, yes. The chick is the uh, president of the I'm Bored Club. Are you with somebody like that? 1-800-5800-TOM. But, you, Dean, you can see, Dean called Jerry's Deli by Beverly Center and said they don't have sushi. Sushi's the only thing they don't have. They've got Chinese food. they got everything else. Pizzas, Greek food. I mean, you name it, they've got it. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. How you doing? I just love killing time like this. I'm doing great. How are okay, you doing? I'm good. I'm in a relationship good? with the girl. That's great. How, how's the wife and kids? Good. Really? Parents yeah. doing okay? Don't know. They don't know me. Never met but your father? Oh. All right. What can I do for you, Rick? I'm currently in a relationship with the girl, and she did that to me three times. The last time, she won't do it again. First time, one of the first times I picked her up, Asked her, what does she want to eat? She goes, I don't know. You decide. Okay. So I take her to Tommy's on Whittier Boulevard. Takes a look, one look at the burger and asks, what is this? I said, you weren't specific, so I went somewhere I like. Next time comes around, some time later, she says, what do you want? I said, let's go get something to eat. She goes, okay, what do you want? I said, uh, it's up to you. Then she says, uh, I'll take anything that you, I'll eat anywhere you take me, just as long as it's not hamburgers. All right? So I pick the biggest dive in Whittier I can, and it's a Mexican place. Oh, there you go. Yeah, she puts up about that. So I said, well, you said not burgers, so I took you to a hole in the wall. Last time, we were arguing, and I said, well, let's go grab something to eat. She goes, I don't care, whatever you want. So I take her to AMPM and get two hot dogs for 99 cents. Very nice. You know, they, they, you can you can do them up any way you like. There, they've got all they got mustard, and ketchup. Yep, she said it was I think they even have onions and relish over there. Yep, I enjoy a ninety-nine cent hot dogs. Nothing I like better than a tank full of unleaded and a couple of AMPM hot dogs. Yeah, the greener the better. <laughs> what are you saying? Uh, yeah, you can never trust the hot dogs. I see. I had no, 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 I don't know that to be the case. I've, I've been in there, so I've seen just fine hot dogs. <laughs> and also, uh, it's a litigious world out there, Rick. Come on, smarten up for God's sake. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. I just started listening to you yesterday, man. What is the most important thing that you've learned here so far? That I ain't got to take no girl out to dinner to get some. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Doug on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hey. Hey, that's my wife to a T. She uh, does the same thing, whines about, you know, never going anywhere. Where do you want to go? Don't care. Let's go to NASCAR. That. Don't want to do that. Dinners. You know, what do you want to eat? Don't care. Let's get chicken. Let's get Chinese. Let's get Greek food. Don't don't want to do any of that. 
and then we've got a, a place down here called DZ Akins in San Diego. It's, yeah. it's like your Jerry's Deli. Hundred and some odd things on the menu. We're in there. We get salad, soup, entrees, and by then she decides to have macaroni and cheese. Right. But that's yeah. after asking how many different kinds of omelets they make. Exactly. How many you know. different kinds of sandwiches do you have? Insane. Insane. It drives me nuts. Been in my life for 15 years. How do you stand it, Doug? Uh, yeah, I get used to it. I work a lot. So, you know, I go find other things to do. <laughs> I find uh, other people to do. Yeah. She's a good woman. In fact, though. I think I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, we miss you down here, man. Well, uh, as you know, in San Diego, they, they took our show and the format off the air, and they replaced us with one of the lowest-rated formats in San Diego. Oh, it's terrible. Nobody's terrible. listening. Nobody's paying any attention. And uh, there you go. And we got a new AM station, and I thought that would have been a, at least something, and they, they, I guess, chose some other format as well. So, Well, that's what happens. Yep. Well, hopefully you'll work something out. Well, Doug, uh, well, the operators are standing by. Yeah, and I'm going to lose your signal in about 10 minutes, so have a good day. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Michelle. Hey, I just wanted, I, I'm not going to waste time with pleasantries because it's a waste of time, but I hope you're well. I just wanted to say I am so sick of these broads and their palate, and they have to have this and that. I work in an office. No, but, uh, by the way, by the way, I would rather be with a high maintenance broad who tells me as one did once that she had to have a vanilla shake and French fries, and she had to have it from Jack in the Box. Exactly. I'd rather. Um, by the way, she may be high maintenance because there was no Jack in the Box in the immediate area when she said that. I'd rather be with that chick. Then the one who goes to Jerry's Deli goes, I don't know what I want. I don't know if I want pizza or a gyro or a sandwich. Maybe I just want some salad or some soup. I don't know. What are you going to have? Well, you know what? If I don't like what I have, I'll have some of what you're having. Shut up! I know, Tom. I totally agree with you. I work in an office full of women, and it takes three hours just to get somebody to make a decision on where we're going to eat. You know what, what this is? Have. You know what this is all based on? I think a lot of the time, and women who, who never pay for anything, uh, they, they think this is the last time they're ever going to see the inside of a restaurant. So they want to pick carefully. They want to make sure they get the exact right thing to eat. One time when I was married many years ago, I took my wife at the time. It was uh, our anniversary, and I took her to the best restaurant in town. And wow. we went out, and sure enough, not only did she read the entire menu, she then had to know what all the specials were. So, so I, I ordered, I knew what I wanted, because this was a five-star restaurant, and I'm looking at the menu, and there it is, beef tenderloin and a Cabernet reduction sauce. Nice. Uh, perfectly prepared to your order. So I, I ordered the beef tenderloin sliced my way. I ordered it medium rare, and it was in the Cabernet mm -hmm. sauce. and the, the mm -hmm. Perfect, right? What does she order? Well, she takes the, one of the specials, wild boar. Oh, my God. So after wild she boar? after she orders it, I said, do you know what wild boar is? She did, Well, no, but I, I wanted to try it. Oh, too much, Tom. So, Way too high maintenance. Uh, so, wow, but get this. Here's what happens, right? So, dinner arrives, and there is my, my, my beef tenderloin looking better than I even imagined. All those beautiful pink and red slices of beef, perfectly arranged. You know, it's an expensive restaurant. Five star yeah, restaurant. Not just watering. You just imagine this, right? And that that Cabernet reduction sauce there with a Cabernet and some onions chopped up in there and some butter, and it was just, oh my god, it was good. And I'm and and the, the the juices of the beef tenderloin, and I'm dipping each slice in there, and there's a little sea salt on top of each slice. And oh my god, nice. it was so good. And I'm looking across the table. And, and there is Miss High Maintenance, and she is there picking at her wild boar, which for people who don't know, wild boar is like the game version of a pig with a real yes. thick skin with a thick fat on it and the, the antithesis of what most women I know would want to be seen eating in public. That's right. And she's there picking at her food. And finally, I see her eyes dart over to my plate. She's got to like, what did you get? <laughs> well, I got the beef tenderloin. She's like, do you mind if I try that? 
Oh, no. And sure enough, she not only tried it, she ate more than half my plate and left the wild boar, which was like $37, $37 entree. She left it sitting there while she ate off my plate. Then, then, then got annoyed because I said I didn't like her eating off my plate. I don't blame you, Tom. I said, if, you know what? I said, if you made a mistake, just order what you want. Exactly. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to have to order, and then I have to wait for it. So now I'm getting like four slices of meat. Right. And that's drama, that's what I'm I talking drama. about. That's what I'm talking about. You know what? I can't stand women like that. I can't be around. Them. I can't do it. I, I don't blame you. I can't either. I, I bring my lunch to work now. I just can't deal with it. Oh, they kill me. They kill me. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Edgar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Long Edgar. Long time, first time. Thank you. Can you say Fort Worth, Texas for me, please? <laughs> Fort Worth, Texas, baby. Yes, sir. Let me tell you my little deal. I got this chick on the side. I got a wife and a kid and whatnot. You know the story. And uh, I have this chick on the side. And, uh, you know, we go to a restaurant here and there. The other day I took her to a Mexican restaurant. And uh, we're looking at the seafood. And she's talking about what are oysters. And you know the plan? Trying to get them either a little bit drunk or get them some kind of way, you know. So oysters are supposed to be an aphrodisiac or whatever. And so I just tell her to take them. Either way it goes, the night ends up perfect. And that's what happens every time. So I'm pretty sure it's not the food, but uh, I guess just women are like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't stand it. I just can't. 1-800-5800-TOM. Sergio on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Oh, man. Let me tell you. Exactly what you say, man. That's exactly what I had to put, what I had to go through until uh, I started listening to your show. Um, would ask my girlfriend, what do you want to eat? And it would take hours, hours, because she'd decide one place and then a minute later she'd decide, well, you know what? I really don't feel like that. I really don't feel like eating this. Then when we finally decide, or when she finally decides on a place, she orders what she orders. Let's say we go to a nice little burger joint. She orders a spaghetti, and it's like, you know, this place oh. is to, you know, eat good burgers. Oh, God, I'm, I'm so glad you're saying this. Go ahead. And so there she is with her spaghetti that tastes like crap. There I am with my good food. And, uh, you know, just like you said, they look over at your plate, and there they are. Could I have a bite? Could I have a taste? And it's like, no, you, I mean, at, at the time I would say, oh yeah, sure. Ever get, you ever get her saying like to the waiter, excuse me, do you have any like small plates? Oh man, yes. And then you know your meal is heading there. That's exactly. Yeah. And when you go to like a Chinese restaurant, they've got like, in case any children come in who are not familiar with Chinese food, they'll have like a hamburger on the menu or they'll have spaghetti or something. They don't play. They don't claim to be experts in making this stuff. It's just there for the average moron who comes in and doesn't know Chinese food. And it's the same thing at other restaurants, uh, where you know it's sushi or it's a steakhouse, or whatever. They've always got a little something. I'm always with the woman. You go into a steakhouse. You have sushi. Oh, These chicks who are obsessed with with eating sushi and talking about sushi. And so every place you go, doesn't matter what it is, you know, Chop House, Italian, do you have sushi? Do you have, like, a California roll? Do you have wasabi? You know what? And that reminds me of something as well. At the time when I met her, she was on the verge of becoming a vegetarian. Well, to her friends. Because whenever she was around me, we'd go uh, to my place because I love steak. So we'd go out for steak. And she would be eyeing the food bad, you know. Oh, I don't want to eat that. Yeah, and what is with the chicks who say they hate steak? Then they have eating it off your plate, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.